Anyway, let's get into the fourth main topic today. And this fourth main topic is actually going to be something I like to call mailbag. This is a brand new main topic um, that I like to do where I answer your questions that you put into uh, the chat or into the survey that I've released. So basically, I want to provide a little bit of context. Um, I've created a form where if you guys want to ask a question and have it featured on the podcast episode, barring that it's appropriate and applicable, um, you can do that. All you have to do to submit a question is go to the description of this particular podcast or YouTube episode, and then look for a Google form that will allow you to go ahead and submit a question as well. If you'd like to submit a question, feel free to. Do not feel obligated to. That's totally okay. If I get it, as long as I get it about maybe a half a day before I air these episodes, which is Thursday or Sunday, I will more than likely be able to feature them on the show and give you an answer. So this is the very first mailbag question that I got, which comes from Chris on YouTube. Chris, I enjoy all of our conversations about the US Women's National Team, and I appreciate the question. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here just because the question was a little long, but it goes something like this. With Katerina Macario playing in the forward line for the friendlies against Columbia, inevitably, does it change who, what five forwards Vladko is going to take to the Olympics. So I'm going to provide a little bit of context before I answer this question real quick. So, and I've made roster predictions guys for the U S women's national team and the upcoming Olympics. My hypothesis was that I would have six defenders, five midfielders and five forwards go to um, the Olympics effectively. And Katarina Macario has always been listed as a midfielder. She was a center attacking midfielder for Stanford. I would say she's still a center attacking midfielder for the U.S. and she's listed as such. But now Vladko in the last couple match has been playing her in the forward line and she's she's had some good support, good performances as well. So does that really change my mind on who um, who Vladko m might take to the Olympics? I'm going to say not really a whole lot of effect, and here's why. So I'm currently hypothesizing that Vladko is going to take Alex Morgan, Kristen Press, Tobin Heath, Megan Rapino, and Carly Lloyd all to the Olympic Ross or, or, or all, all to the Olympics uh, this summer in Tokyo 2021. And if Vladko had been has been playing Macario for like 10 matches on the forward line consecutively and having her starting, I think it's a different conversation. But since this is just two friendly games where she's played in the forward line, I don't think it's really enough for me to say that Macario is a forward. Vladko might feel differently. I'm obviously not inside his head, but um, for every camp, including this most recent one that he's taken Macario to, she's been listed as a midfielder, and she was a midfielder with Stanford as well, like I said earlier. Like I said, my mind changes if if she's a forward for like the next 10 matches and starts and that's different then that shows that Vladko intends on using her probably as such, but I would maintain my current, uh, five strikers as, or five forwards as Morgan, Press, Lloyd, Rapino, and Heath. So I would say that my roster prediction remains unchanged. I would say the five midfielders that Vladko is going to take is Sam Uis, Rose Lavelle, Julie Ertz, Katarina Macario, and who am I missing? Lindsay Horan. And then the five forwards are the ones that I mentioned just a few seconds ago, too. So I'm trying to think of a good... What really makes this interesting... What really makes this interesting is... Let, let's make an assumption here. Let's make an assumption that Katarina, Car Katarina Macario is, just for argument's sake, is now going forward for the US Women's National Team a forward and a forward only. She can no longer play the midfield Vladko will never use her as a midfielder again, or ever, actually, because she's never played in the midfield for the U.S., but let's assume that she's just a uh, forward from now on. I would still take Macario, or not Macario, Lloyd, Rapino, Morgan, Preston, Heath over Macario. I don't think there's a big enough sample size for Vladko or any of us to really say that Macario has proven to be a better forward. I want to be clear, a better forward than those five and experienced enough to make that a uh, roster. And then if that is the case, then I would say that it changes my picks a little bit because then I've got the five forwards that I just said, Rapino, Lloyd, Press, Heath, Morgan. But then if he doesn't take Macario and she can only play forward, assuming she can't play the midfield, then 
my five midfielders end up being Ertz, Sam Mewis, Roosevelt, Lindsey Horan, and Christy Mewis. That would be my five midfielders if Katarina Macario is no longer a midfielder. That is making a huge assumption that's not really valid. That's making the assumption that Katarina Macario is no longer a forward and can't play, or, or is no longer a midfielder and can't play the midfield. That's not correct, obviously. But just for argument's sake, I want to pose that hypothetical to you guys just because it's kind of fun. But however, even with... Um, I guess I'll give you the bottom line here. Even with uh, Macario playing the forward line, to me, it doesn't change my mind about which five forwards he's going to take. And I still will think that Vladko will take Macario to the Olympics as a midfielder. I think with Macario playing the forward line and playing it well the last two matches, it helps her stock in making the roster because it shows that she can not only play in the midfield, she's already proven that she's a midfielder and a really good one, but there's also some potential there to have some flexibility and also have her play at the forward line if Vladko were to need to. So I think that that's mainly the impact that I see with Macario playing in the forward line uh, in this particular case, but I don't see her overtaking um, the other five forwards that I mentioned earlier. So I hope that makes a ton of sense, guys. That's sort of my bottom line for this whole thing. Chris, I, again, uh, really, really appreciate the question. It's a really good thought-provoking one that I wanted to uh, take the time in this episode and address. So Wow, that was that was fun. All right, guys, so that'll do it for the last main topic. What do you guys make of the whole uh, Macario playing at the forward line for the friendlies against Columbia? Feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys, so with that last main topic down and out of the way, we have made it to the end of another phenomenal episode of the Women's Soccer Slash Football Podcast. We've had a lot of awesome moments this week, and I'm really happy that there's a lot of positive news coming out of the world of women's soccer, which has been fantastic. Again, if you guys would like a question featured on Mailbag, the Google form will be linked down in the description below to, uh, to fill out at your leisure. And then I will also link all of my other social media platforms and also the audio platforms that you can listen to this episode in podcast form at your leisure as well. And I will also link every other article that I've described earlier on in the episode just so you guys can get a good hold on what exactly I'm talking about. So, guys, that'll do it for this episode of the Women's Soccer Slash Football Podcast. I'm still working on the name. But my name's Bryce, and we'll see you in the next episode. I hope you guys have a great week, and as always, have a great day.